हेलो हेलो यस सर इज इट ऑडियोबल यस सर एग्जैक्टली एट नाइन फोर्टी फाइव विल बी स्टार्टिंग द क्लास फाइन सो व्हाट अबाउट द स्लाइड्स आर द स्लाइड्स विजिबल I'm sharing them right now. Yes, sir. <clears throat> Hello, audience. so you can uh, display your name as well as your usn i request all the students to display your name as well as your uh, usn so all of you unmute your uh, audio so as to have a better uh, interaction i request all the students to unmute your audio hello are you there sir so shall we start anybody there hello yes sir you students mat respond madla andre henga tagutte yaar bandi adu anta telli maruti handral sir maruti handral Yes, sir. You need to speak, sir. Okay, sir. If you are address now, you need to speak. Okay, sir. Ah, uh, shall we start? Yes, sir. Are you there? Yes, sir. All of you, turn on your video. Is it possible? yeah let me start so myself uh, ravi rayappa i'll be taking operating system subject code is uh, 18 ec 641 18 ec 641 uh, so we have the reference test book as a concept based approach by dhamdev and we need to refer the second edition that this is very important and that is being shown using the star mark so the textbook so what you need to refer is uh, dhamdev 
concept based approach by Dhamdev, second edition. And you can also refer uh, the reference textbook. So that is operating system concepts by Galvin. Okay. So basically, all the concepts are uh, based upon these two books. Okay. So you can refer the slides and I'll be. And I'll be giving you the notes as well. Okay. So here is the, the module one syllabus and module two syllabus. So introduction to operating system, operating system goals, so goals of an OS operating system and uh, operations of an operating system. So then computational structures, resource allocation techniques and efficiency, so performance, etc. So so basically, in module one, I'll be dealing with uh, the different uh, types of operating system. So namely, we have a uh, batch processing operating system. So then multi-programming operating system, then time sharing the systems, real time systems and distributed uh, operating systems. And uh, the module two deals with the process management. So where we'll be dealing with the details of a process and what is a program, what is a process, and the difference between a program and a process and something called as a process control block and uh, the various states of a process okay so basically module 2 deals with process management and module 3 is uh, the memory management so module 4 is uh, file systems and module 5 is uh, message passing and uh, deadlocks so we can encounter uh, some problems as well say in module three and uh, module five so basically you have some problems also right so let me start with uh, the module one so as the name itself indicates uh, the subject name is operating system operating system uh, let me first deal with the definition of operating system so an operating system is a collection of uh, software basically so uh, as we are all of using laptops and we know that uh, like in a laptop uh, the operating system is very much important so we have uh, the installation of operating system first in the laptop so once you buy a laptop or a uh, desktop computer basically so once you buy a computer then uh, first thing what we'll be doing is we'll be installing the operating system and on the operating system i can install all the application uh, softwares so basically this operating system is also a software or a collection of software that will manage the hardware resources okay i repeat the definition of operating system is operating system is a collection of a software that will manage the hardware resources and here you can see on the slide here i have shown for your better understanding uh, some examples of hardware resources so the various hardware resources of a computer are so you can have the processor and we have the ram so ram is called as the primary memory or the main memory so you can have the ram slots so being used in the laptops as well as in the desktops so we have a input device like keyboard and mouse and hard disk hard disk is basically secondary storage and we have the display display device like monitors and output device the printers so basically these are uh, the examples of some hardwares right of a computer and uh, who will manage all these hardwares who will control all these hardwares of a computer that is the os okay so this os is basically meant to manage meant to control these hardwares of the computer system so the definition is an operating system like uh, we'll call it as os in short an operating system or OS is basically the collection of software that will manage all the hardware resources of a computer and it will also provide various services to the users. Okay. So now regarding the introduction to the introduction to the operating system. So basically I can refer to this as a generalized uh, diagram. So where we have this OS layer so this OS layer is above the computer. I mean, inside the computer, so we have the installation of this OS. And above the OS, you have the application programs to be run. Okay, 
and uh, at the top we have the user. So these users will be having some application programs or user programs and all the user programs or application programs will be run on the operating system and this operating system will be acting as an intermediary between uh, the user or application and the, and the computer hardware. Okay, so this acts as a intermediate layer between the application programs and the computer or the hardware machine or the host machine. Okay. Again, for confirmation, uh, are you listening? Audience? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. So, what is an operating system basically? Operating system is nothing but the collection of uh, software programs. Okay. And OES is also a software program. So, which can be installed inside the computer. And uh, so, these application programs will be installed on the, on the OES. Okay. So, once you buy a laptop, so first thing what we do is we'll be installing the OS and after installing the OS only, I can install all the application programs. So example for uh, application programs. So what are the application programs? So which we are uh, familiar with. So here, what I'm using the uh, so-called presentation PPT as well as uh, uh, so Microsoft uh, materials like MS Word, MS Office, PPT, GOM player, media player. Okay. So all these are the application programs. So these application programs can be run on the OS. Okay. So according to the syllabus, uh, so this introduction to the OS, it is a heading. So this OS is nothing but the collection of uh, programs stored in the ROM, ROM. ROM stands for a read only memory. Always keep this in mind, our OES will be stored in the ROM, okay? So this OES is nothing but the collection of uh, software programs that is stored in the ROM, read-only memory. So a program that acts as an intermediary between a user of a computer and the computer hardware. So this statement is uh, justified using this particular figure. So where we have, uh, where we have this uh, user and we have the application programs, all the application programs will be run on the operating system. And this operating system will be in turn interacting with the hardware. Okay, so once I say hardware or host machine means you can imagine all this like processor, RAM, keyboard, input devices, output devices, hard disk, etc. Okay, so the user is uh, usually avoided to have a direct interaction with the computer hardware. So as the hardware is uh, much more costlier, usually we avoid the direct interaction of the user with the computer hardware or the host machine. Hence, we have this uh, OES operating system, so which acts as a intermediate between the application, application programs or the user programs and the computer machine or hardware, okay, also called as the host machine. So, so this operating system will be acting as a translator between user and computer system, the same thing like what we have discussed. So this OS will be acting as a translator. So why? Because uh, we being users are, are familiar with high level languages like C, C++, Java, etc. And the computer, uh, as we know that, uh, this computer is uh, able to understand only the binary language. So it means the language in terms of only zeros and ones. And we being humans, we cannot understand that zeros and ones language. Hence, we need someone to, we need someone to understand these two languages. Okay. And that is the actual uh, role of this operating system where this OES will act as a intermediate between the application program and the host machine or the computer or the hardware. So this acts like a translator between user and computer system. Yeah. So OS is software that helps user and computer or the hardware to do some task. Hence, it's a software 
that provides interface between hardware and the software. So here the hardware refers to this uh, hardware computer and the software refers to application programs or the user programs. Okay. So this OS provides a software platform on which application programs can run, like as I told. So all the application programs will be installed on the operating system. All the application programs are all the user programs will be run on the operating system. So, so then regarding the operating system goals, so the OS main goals are execute user programs and make uh, solving user programs easier. So whatever the user wants to execute, so whatever the programs that user wants to execute, those programs will be executed uh, using the operating system. And second goal of OS is makes the computer system convenient to use. Okay, so a user can have the interaction with all the services offered offered by the computer or the hardware using the operating system. So the use of computer hardware in an efficient manner is the third goal, where any user can access RAM, ROM, etc. So basically, these three are the operating system goals. So from uh, this particular slide. What is the bottom line? So what we have understood is the definition of operating system and the different layers of operating system where it lies. Okay, so we have the user. Okay, I being the user, you being the user. Suppose you say I want to type a word document, right? Or I want to have the PPT presentation. Okay, so for uh, such applications, okay, these are the examples of application task or the user task, and for this to be achieved i need uh, the computer hardware of course i need computer and uh, all the resources of the computer okay so as to achieve the interaction between the application programs or the user programs and the computer we have this os this os will be acting as a middleman between the application programs and the computer machine or the hardware machine or the host machine okay yeah here are uh, some of the examples of operating system. So we, we being engineering students normally, usually will be using the, this Windows XP, Windows 7, Windows 8, Windows 10 widely. Okay, so Windows XP, Windows 7, Windows 8, Windows 10, as well as we do have the use of Linux operating system as well as uh, Mac. So this Macintosh operating system is used in the Apple, Apple iPhones, and we have a Jelly Bean version of Android. And in all the mobiles, like I'll be using a Android a operating system and we have Open Solaris. So this Open Solaris is one more operating system. So by Sun Microsystems used in uh, servers. And we have a Red Hat as well as uh, this BADA operating system, BADA, BADA operating system. And that is basically used by Samsung. Okay, so basically, in this slide, you have a few examples of operating system widely used OS. And according to the Google, uh, so we have here top five operating systems uh, are so, like in the first place, we have the Windows 95, Windows Vista, XP, etc. And in second place, we have Apple, uh, Apple Mac operating system, and we have uh, Google's Android uh, operating system. And in fourth place, we have Apple. Uh, iPhones operating system, iPhones and uh, iPads. So the OS that will be used in iPhones and iPads. And in the last place, uh, so we have this Linux operating system. Okay. So, so what is the bottom line of this particular slide is, here I've shown some of the widely used operating uh, systems. Okay. Yeah. So now, uh, next heading is uh, the computer uh, system uh, diagram. So we have here the computer system structure. Okay, so basically you can find uh, these four uh, components. Okay, so we have the hardware, and we have the operating system, and we have the application programs. Okay, so the diagram for this has been shown here. So we have basically the four uh, common elements inside the computer uh, system. So the four main components of the computer systems are, so we have the user layer, Okay, the user programs, and we have uh, system and application programs, and we have the operating system, 
which will act as a intermediate between the application programs or user programs and the underlying uh, hardware or the host machine or the computer okay so what this is uh, basically showing is the four components the four components involved in the computer uh, system basically so we have the topmost end as the user end according to the previous figure also so we have this top end is the user end and next comes the application layer application programs and uh, the below that we have the operating system layer and at the bottom most we have the computer machine or the host machine or the hardware okay same figure has been shown here and this is according to your reference book i mean according to according to your test book okay so you can practice this figure and heading for this is uh, four components of a computer uh, system okay your yeah, participants are you there hello Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Are you listening? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. These are the four layers of operating system. According to the previous slide, we do have uh, we do have the four layers, right? So we have the topmost layer as user layer, and below that we have application programs, and below that we have the operating system, and the bottommost layer was the computer hardware. Okay. So we have this as the user layer, like user can issue the commands. So for example, uh, like according to the diagram here, user one is uh, using the compiler. Say if user one is writing the C code and for compilation of C code, of course, we will like we'll be using the compiler and user two is uh, using, uh, using programming in 886, okay. 886 mega processor, uh, it is using and user three is uh, using a text editor. So where user three using the say MS uh, MS documents, MS Word, MS Office, Excel, PowerPoint, etc. Likewise, I can find n number of users here where each and every user is using uh, using various uh, application programs. So for example, user one is dealing with uh, C code. User two is dealing with uh, assembly level coding, so for example, 885, 886 programming, etc. And user three is dealing with uh, Microsoft uh, Word, Microsoft Office, Excel, etc. Okay. And we have something called as uh, system and application programs, like this being the second layer. And all these are the examples of application programs. So for example, C code or assembly code or MS Office, uh, and also the database system. So where user n is dealing with the database system. Okay. So for example, the compiler, suppose if I'm uh, writing the program in a C language, means I need to compile that. And to compile a C language, high level language, of course I'll be using compiler. And if any user is uh, writing the program in uh, assembly level language, ALP what you call it as, assembly level programming, say for example, 885 processor or uh, 8086 processor. So then I'll be need of assemblers. Right? So where uh, assembler will be able to convert assembly level language into machine language. Similarly, the function of compiler. So what a compiler will do? Anybody? Srinidhi Ayan. Srinidhi, are you there? Srinidhi? Srinidhi? Sahana K. Sahana K. So what is a compiler basically? Hello? What is a compiler? Anybody? Srinidhi, are you there? Participants? Somebody there? Anybody home? Mohit HD? Hello? Karthik DM? Hello? 
कार्तिक डीएम हेलो पार्टिसिपेंट्स हेलो नेवर माइंड या सो द कंपाइलर इज बेसिकली ए सॉफ्टवेयर दैट विल कन्वर्ट हाई लेवल लैंग्वेज लाइक सी सी प्लस प्लस into the machine language okay so here according to the diagram different users are using different uh, application programs application softwares okay and all these application softwares will be running on the operating system and in turn the operating system will be interacting with the computer hardware so here no user is given direct interaction with the computer hardware hence the user is able to interact with the operating system and in turn os will be interacting with the computer machine or the host machine right or the hardware and here also like i mentioned the examples of application programs like ms word ms excel powerpoint windows media player gom player and scanning system with the antivirus etc so these are the examples of application programs or the user programs and we have something called as a system programs as well so the example for system programs uh, is suppose if i am opening a video file so once i open the video file means all the video signals will be guided to the monitor and all the audio signals will be sent to speakers so that uh, the audience can hear and uh, all the video signals are been uh, sent to the monitor so that the user can view the pictures okay so this uh, like according to the hardware according to the hardware appropriate signals will be guided here right so this is example for a system program again uh, system booting so once i turn on the system means i'll be having the loading of operating system from rom into the processor or to the cpu so this can be called as system booting and this is one of the example for system programs so here uh, yeah, basically what we are doing is we are sending the correct data to the hardware So, for example, video signals will be sent to the monitor, and audio signals will be sent to the speakers. So, like here, I mentioned examples of application programs as well as the system programs. And according to this particular figure, what you can notice here is that again we have the user layer, and we have the system programs or application programs, and uh, all the application programs will be run on the operating system and the bottom most layer is the hardware machine okay same diagram is been shown in a different manner so where we have the four important components of a computer system again i repeat those four components of computer systems are user layer we have and we have system programs or application programs and below that we have the operating system which acts as a intermediate between the user layer and the computer machine or the host machine or the hardware so i think the classes will end at uh, 10:30 so now it's uh, 10:11 still we have uh, much time so next is uh, mode of a mode of operation of computer so mode of operation of the computer so for that we have here again the same figurities so we have here uh, two modes of operation of computer so one we call it as user mode and second mode is kernel mode i repeat so modes of operation of computer is uh, so we have basically two modes so one is user mode and uh, the kernel mode and uh, this figure is again the different layers of computer system like having the application programs user programs so we have user programs here and we have operating system layer here and we have the hardware okay again we have like hardware can be cpu or ram slots or we have a keyboard monitor printer plotter scanner etc okay so like again same statements all the user programs all the user uh, user programs or application uh, softwares will be run on the operating system okay hence these user programs or application softwares can interact with the underlying hardware using the operating system so so these application softwares and user programs and os are uh, 
nothing but the software part of the diagram. And regarding hardware, uh, so you can have keyboard, monitor, printer, plotter, scanner, etc. And uh, so the modes of operation of computer are basically like two, like as you said, we have a user mode and kernel mode. And uh, the programs, so which are running in the so-called kernel mode has got the complete access to all the hardware. So whatever the programs are been running in the kernel mode will be having the complete access to all the underlying hardware here. And this kernel mode can execute any instruction that a machine is capable of executing. Okay. And this kernel mode programs or instructions will be having a high privilege or higher rights when compared to the user mode programs. And uh, with respect to user mode, all the programs running in user mode can execute only a few of the machine instructions. So when compared to the kernel mode, and these user mode programs will be having a lesser rights when compared to the kernel mode. So basically, this diagram is simply to indicate that the different modes of operation of computers are basically two we have. So one we call it as kernel mode and second one is the user mode. Okay. Fine. Yeah. So we can have the switching between the user mode and the kernel mode. So while executing any of the program, so we if we need to have the switching between the modes of computer, say from user mode to the kernel mode. So for example, uh, if a user is writing a C program and upon writing the C program, I can need to execute it, right? I can need to compile it. So by having the control F9. So, so these tasks will be carried out in the user mode of operation of computer. So writing the program in C language and after writing the program, so the compilation using control F9 will be taken care by the user mode and to execute the program just by loading the program into the RAM or the primary memory. And this program will be executed on the processor or by the CPU. So these two operations will be carried out in the kernel mode. So this uh, slide is simply indicating the various uh, functionalities which will be carried out in the user mode as well as in the kernel mode. Okay, so the writing of program and the compilation of program will be done in the user mode and as well as the execution of the program just by loading the program into the RAM and executing on the CPU will be done in the kernel mode. Okay, so the, these words user mode, kernel mode will be used widely in the upcoming modules, hence to have the better understanding of these words and what do they insist, okay? So what do they suggest? So for that, uh, so you can take this as an example. So where we have, again, the application programs or user programs and the operating system and the underlying hardware. So where we can have the division of uh, the various operation of computer into user mode as well as the kernel mode and what all operations will be done in the user mode and in the kernel mode as mentioned here. Okay, so we can have the switching between the user mode to the kernel mode just by using the trap instruction. Okay, so we have a system call called as a trap. So by using this uh, trap instruction, I can switch over from user mode to the kernel mode. Okay. So now seeing the abstract view of operating system. So this abstract view of uh, an operating system is uh, nothing but so like with respect to different audience or let's say different kinds of audiences, what they think about the operating system, okay? So what do this operating system mean actually with respect to all these entities? So for example, uh, so one entity can be a college student and second entity can be a programmer or for application, application package or for a technician. So with respect to these personalities, what does an operating system mean, okay? So this is adding abstract views of an operating system. Okay. So what does this operating system means for these people? So for these entities, so for example, uh, say for a college student or to a programmer or to the user of application package or to a technician, okay, technician. So what does this OS mean actually? So to a 
school going student or a college student the os is simply the package of uh, i mean simply the software that will allow him to access the internet why because uh, all the college students are very much inclined to the use of internet okay so for those students os simply means that os is nothing but a software that will uh, allow them to access the internet similarly to a programmer okay software engineer so what does this os mean so for a programmer or for a software designer os is the software that makes it possible to develop programs on the computer system why because the main uh, like the main job of a programmer is to program okay so like he'll be designing so many systems like being a software engineer hence for a programmer or for a software engineer the os is nothing but a software that will enable him to develop new new programs on a computer system similarly for a user of application package the os is simply the software that will allow him to use the package okay and to a technician basically uh, a computerized chemical plant say for example the os is the invisible component of a computer system that will help him to control the plant so let's like say being a technician his main job is to control the plant operations hence for uh, him the view of operating system is os is nothing but uh, a invisible component for him and that will enable him to control a particular operation of a plant so like this can be the question and examination so explain the abstract views of an operating system right and for that you can write down uh, the different views of os with respect to these uh, different entities underlined here so one is the college student second one is the programmer third one is for the user of application package and fourth one is for technician let me confirm your uh, presence sonika p are you there sonika p srinidhi are you there hello are you there anybody excuse me hello okay right So next dealing with uh, the structure of operating system so we have the different layers of uh, operating system so we have the user being the topmost layer and we have the user uh, interface and below that we have non kernel uh, routines and below that we have the kernel and in the bottommost layer we have the computer hardware like in the last figure like what we have seen is uh, so we have the user and we have the application programs or user programs and we have the os in the middle and the bottom layer bottom most layer was computer hardware same figure is been shown here so where uh, we have different layers of the operating uh, system so basically the heading for this particular diagram is uh, structure of operating system where we are showing the different layers of operating system so we have uh, something called as a user so this user is able to issue the commands so all the commands issued by the user will be accepted by the user interface where the user interface main function is to accept the various commands issued by the user and uh, so once i say the commands means i can have here uh, something called as a cli and a gui cli stands for uh, command line interface where uh, where the user can have the issue of commands so to achieve each and every like every function or task the user is able to have uh, the use of different commands like earlier uh, suppose if i go for the dos operating system means uh, so that dos is basically a command based operating system it is where for each and every functionality i need to issue so many commands like it's a command based uh, like domain it is so we have something called as cli command line interface and we have something called as 
GUI. GUI stands for uh, graphical user interface. Like say nowadays advanced operating system will be accompanied uh, with this uh, GUI where we have uh, the use of uh, so-called touch screen or it can have uh, mouse clicking or opening a folder. So for achieving these functionalities, a user is uh, given much more comfort to achieve all the functionalities. So for example, for opening a folder, simply I can go for a right click on the mouse and I can select the option open a folder and the folder is created or I can open the folder. So to, so to achieve so many functionalities, we have a, a much more easier approach and that we call it as a graphical user interface. And in the older versions of operating systems, they call so for example, the DOS system, like, uh, like we had this uh, CLI, command line interface, where we basically had so many commands. So for listing different files of a folder, so we had a command like ls. And to have the making of a new folder, so you can go for mkdir. So this mkdir was the command used to make a new folder. And to have the listing of different files per folder, I can go for a use of ls command. Okay, so basically, this uh, user interface is used to accept the commands which are issued by the user. And regarding this non-kernel routines, its function is non-kernel routines are used to implement the user commands. So whatever the commands that will be issued by the user will be implemented by this. Uh, non-kernel routines and this non-kernel routines will be helping the user to access the different resources of the computer regarding kernel so this kernel will be acting as the heart of the operating system and it controls the operation of the computer and this kernel will provide a set of functions and resources to use the cpu or memory or all the other, other resources of the computer system so using the, these kernel, this will provide a set of functions and resources to use the resources of the computer system. And this will be acting as the heart of the computer system or the heart of the OS. So the functions and services of the kernel are invoked by the non-kernel routines. Again, these non-kernel routines, not to forget, these non-kernel routines are basically used to implement the user commands. So whatever the commands that user has given, all the commands will be accepted, of course, accepted by the user interface, but these commands will be implemented by the non-kernel routines and the functions and services of the kernel are being invoked by the non-kernel routines. So with respect to examination point of view, so this is the important concept structure of operating system where we are representing the different layers of operating system, namely, the non-kernel routines and kernel as well as the user interface, right? And we have like, as usual, the user will be acting as the topmost layer and the, and the bottommost layer and we have the computer hardware, okay? So while explaining this particular concept, don't forget to mention the functionalities of user, user interface, non-kernel routines and kernel, okay? And regarding like, so it's computer hardware, like we have so many computer resource, like hardware resource, like, uh, keyboard, CPU, mouse, uh, monitor, printer, et cetera. Okay. Yeah, so I can mention uh, these concepts. Yeah, so right now, like I'll be stopping right here and I insist all the participants to go through the slides. Is anybody there? Vidya GB, Vinay G, hello? Are you there? Excuse me. Fine. I'll be logging out now. We'll be logging out. So according to the timetable, I request all the participants to log in five minutes earlier to the predefined timings. Okay, fine. Thank you. 